Can you guys hear me? It's good to see you. This is unique. This is unique, a little bit different. Miss you guys. Am I supposed, am I supposed to be starting here? Keith, yeah, am I supposed to be starting, Keith? Am I coach, good? If you, want to, if you want to start us off with an opening statement, Coach, just some thoughts on the team and how the offseason's been going together, and okay. then we'll take questions from there. Perfect. First, um, I appreciate you guys uh, being here or being on the computer now. Uh, seems like these are all the meetings nowadays. This is how it's done in 2020. Um, we just finished up a practice. I mean, we've been practicing and we've been here since June, too. So very thankful that we've been able to keep our guys healthy and very thankful for the university and Pat Hobbs and Dr. Bouchard. Uh, Dr. Womack, all the people that have worked uh, for hours and, and, and months and weeks uh, uh, about the protocol here for keeping our guys safe and healthy. I'm very thankful for our guys that they've really done a great job of sacrificing and keeping themselves healthy. And I'm going to miss seeing you guys at the rack. This is our new normal. Um, but I'm excited about the season. I really am. Our, our program it's come a long way. I'm excited about 16 guys having a 3.0 grade point average. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, the development of our veteran guys and, and, and our young guys coming in. Uh, I'm excited about our new president at our university here, President Holloway, who's been exciting and, and uh, involved. Um, also want to congratulate him on starting our new institute. Um, you know, for the study of global uh, justice um, to do that in this first, you know, four months. Amazing. Raised $15 million for that cause. That's unbelievable, especially in this day and age with the pandemic. Um, so very, you know, very thankful, very thankful to be back for my fifth year. Seems like I just started five minutes ago, but uh, five years have gone by quickly and very thankful for you guys um, uh, and always uh, your coverage of our, of our program. So. That's that's my uh, opening statement. Is that a good one? Thanks, Coach. Uh, we'll start off with a question from Jerry, and then if anybody else has any questions, be sure just to use that raise your hand tool, and I'll, I'll get to as many as we can. Hey, Steve. The, the first ever press conference question from a from a turnpike rest stop. <laughs> um, be careful. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm stop. I stopped driving. I'm I'm not breaking any laws. Uh, so, first question: You you how do you prepare a team? when for a season when you don't even really know what your schedule is and like schedules are changing by the day <laughs> I, you know i'm prepared i'm excited i think you know i've tried since june uh, to prepare them for a season i know we're going to have a season um who we're going to play that's a whole nother a whole nother story um but but you know, it's right around the corner. Everyone's worked too hard. There's a lot of basketball programs, too, that are up and running. You're only going to read about the few that aren't. Um, there's a lot of Division One programs that are up and running and doing a great job. I think all year long, you are going to have to navigate COVID. You know, you're never going to have your whole team. Um, you know, it's just like any year. Um, you have injuries, and I'm really looking at, you know, COVID. Um, the same way, you know, if a guy, you know, sprains an ankle or something, he's going to be out 21 days. Hopefully he's, he's fine and, and, and healthy and not affected by it. Uh, but we're going to have to navigate all kinds of obstacles with the season, with travel, um, you know, with contract tracing, with all the things that you deal with with this virus. So, uh, but I am confident, Jerry, we're going to have we're going to have a good year and we're going to play basketball this year. They're playing football. You know, where the NFL's playing, the NBA played, you know, I think it's great for our guys, too. They love being on the court. It's really their only normal, you, you know, part of their day nowadays. And they come out and they look forward to practicing and stuff. And we're, we're certainly going to look forward to playing some other people. I'll go next to a question to Bobby Barron. There you go. Sorry, Coach. Um, what areas do you think this group has improved upon, uh, you know, in the last couple of months? And what areas do you, are you hoping to see, you know, get a little bit better over the next few weeks? I mean, you know, that's always a question. You know, I guess we, we need to improve every area. I mean, I mean, there's no team right now that feels good really about anything. Um, I, I, I am excited that we're a veteran team. It's the first time in my tenure here that we've actually had some guys that have been through you know, have been through a lot. So we got, you know, seniors, we have some juniors that have logged a ton of minutes. We have some sophomores that have logged a ton of minutes. Um, so I'm excited by, about that. I'm really excited about our depth. 
because I, I think we've tried to build a program that has had depth. I play my depth. Um, you know, we're, we're only going to be as good as our bench, too. So I feel like this year, more than ever, your depth is really going to get tested. Um, and, and, you know, I like the fact that we can go 10, 11, you know, deep, you know, with this group. Um, but we got to continue to get better in every area. Like, I don't like love our defense at all. You know, and you guys are going to say that our numbers last year, like numbers don't, you know, tell the whole story sometimes. I mean, you know, the, the, the numbers weren't where I wanted them last year. Uh, certainly the different things we could do defensively weren't where I wanted them, you know, last year or they're not to this point. Um, you know, I think we could score the ball a little bit better, uh, you know, but that, that doesn't solve all your problems. Um, you know, we have to make free throws. That's been a big issue for us, and that's going to be important for us, you know, all year making, you know, shooting the ball better from three-point land. Uh, but, we, you know, we, we play in the best league in the country, and you got to be able to play multiple styles. You know, I, I think you know, people just don't realize the depth of our conference and the depth of styles that everyone plays. You know, Wisconsin slows the ball down, you know, and holds it. Uh, Michigan State wants to get a shot up every five seconds, and you turn around and you play Michigan, and yeah, you know they space the floor out and have six foot eleven, seven foot three point shooters, and then um, you know you play Purdue, they run a hundred sets, you know. So the 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 quality teams in our league and the preparation that you have to be on top of, um, you know, really stresses your whole program and, and your bench and everybody else. Um, you know, so we have to improve in every area and we have to improve against playing all those different styles too, you know, which is hard to si simulate w when you're practicing. So, um, you know, I think we've improved. I think our, you know, again, our depth is better. Um, you know, this year is just going to be unique in every way. And, and again, we're playing in the best league in the country. So the challenges come every time we're going to play 20 out of 25 games in league play. So 80% of our schedule is league play. Last year, we had 11 non-conference games. You're only going to have five. And so you're playing iron every night. Seven teams are ranked in the top 25 and possibly could be nine or 10 that, you know, receiving votes. So, um, you know, challenges, challenges. Coronavirus in this league, being challenging. Take the next question from Keith Sargent. Hey, Steve, how are you? Keith, good. Good to see you. Um. So, looking back on last March, um, does having a rug pulled out from you last March, miss, missing the NCAA tournament, that serve a, as a little bit of motivation for you and for the team? You know, uh, you know, hoping any of that motivates, you know, my team. Our, you know, our goal every year is to play in the tournament. You know, unfortunate. You know, I feel bad for Aquazi and feel bad for Shaq Carter and Joey Downs, you know, three seniors that don't have another shot at it. Um but, you know, hopefully we're a team that, you know, we, we become a team that plays in the tournament and we, we're not answering those questions, you know, ever again down the road. You know, we just go every year, just like most of the teams in our league go. Um, and that's where I want to get this program at. But I think our guys are motivated. I think they're motivated to have a great year. I, I really do. I think uh, this group has been tight knit. Um, you know, they spent a lot of time certainly together in Cove. We're the only ones here on campus over here on Livingston. So it's been a long, long journey for them. And I think they're excited you know, about playing, but, you, you know, I think they're motivated to win basketball games and, and keep this program at a high level. Jordan, you on there? I think the next question from Brian Fonseca. Yeah, hey, Steve, how are you? Brian, good. Um, it looked like, uh, uh, just off today, it looked like Gio sat out for a bit in practice and was struggling a bit. Is he, is he doing all right? No, he's fine. It's fine. He's had a headache. And that gives me a headache when he has a headache. So, yeah, he's fine. I mean, we've had the normal, like, preseason. We've sprained ankles. We had, you know, bone bruises. We've had headaches. We've had quarantines we've had to deal with. Um, luckily, we've been very healthy in that area. But we've dealt with a little bit of everything today. So, you know, um, if you came yesterday, you would have liked one player. If you came today, you'll like another player. Um, you know, so we've had all that. Um, it's made our preseason interesting. But these guys have, you know, stayed together, and that's the good part. Our, our young incoming group has added a lot of competition, which I think has helped. Their, their size is terrific. Um, but, oh, Gio's, Gio's been good. Gio's been good. Uh, I'm expecting him to practice tomorrow. 
We'll take the next question from Cratch. Hey, Steve, how are you? Good. How you doing? Good. Hey, uh, two questions. One, when do you guys start with the daily antigen testing? And two, have you done anything different in terms of meetings or practices to kind of split the guys up? So God, if God forbid something happens, you know, you have two guards to play a game or, or have two big I mean, we've been, uh, I don't know if it's a month now, we've been daily, you know, testing. So uh, we've been doing it for a while. I used to only get nervous two times a week. Now I get nervous every day until the lady comes down. Um, we've been spreading our guys out. You know, the good part of our new facility, we got the best facility in the country. And, and quite honestly, you know, having the outdoor space, um, which I know we didn't, you know, design it that way for COVID, but it's really helped us. We meet outside a great deal, and the weather's been nice, too. Uh, our weight room can go indoors and outdoors. Um, the size of our facility, too. Our locker room is bigger. You know, everything's bigger, so it's been better for um, being able to adapt. But I've met more one-on-one -on -one with guys. Um, my staff has to wear their mask all the time. Um, you know, we've made a lot of adjustments, quite honestly, and we have meetings all the time. Everything's about COVID and protocols and water bottles to stools at the games to testing referees. I mean, spent hours and hours on Zoom calls, you know, how to keep these guys as safe as possible. So it's in every conversation as we start the season. It's going to be in every uh, pregame talk and postgame talk and, you know. It's, uh, as you can tell, in the country is, you know, really getting hit hard right now. We want to just try to keep our guys safe. But, yeah, we try to do everything we can to keep them spaced apart. And, you know, it's a little harder in basketball. I guess football has more players. But, you know, I can't divide the point guards and the two guards and stuff, you know, as much as, um, you know, I, I try to divide them as much as I can. But sometimes you got to have two point guards going against each other. You know, um, it's just the way it is. We'll go next question is Steve Politi. Hey, hey, Steve, how you doing? Steve, good. How you doing? Good. good. Hey, yeah. For a lot of people, you guys getting pulled off the court that night in Indianapolis was really the first moment like, wow, this is, you know, our world is changing. Are you at all frustrated that all these months later, we are still here in this country dealing with this, worrying about this, you know, not knowing what? going to happen in the next few months just from a personal standpoint yeah, I, I mean you know again um uh, you know everyone's i think is frustrated um you know everyone would like to have a vaccination i think we've learned a lot in, the, in this period of time I, i've learned to appreciate some things that i never had a chance in 30 years of coaching to appreciate and uh, I appreciate my team more. I think I've gotten better as a coach. You know, I've been able to focus more, not, not in as many planes and trains and automobiles as in the past. Uh, but, yeah, everyone's disappointed. I thought we'd start this season up and we could have fans at the rack and we could, uh, you know, get back to life, you know, being normal. But, you know, those are the obstacles. I took the job four years ago. I think, you know, Jerry Carino told me a lot of, a lot of obstacles that, and, uh, you know, he never told me about a pandemic coming. Uh, but, you know, this is the world we're living in right now. We got social issues. We had Kobe Bryant. We had George Floyd. We had to deal with canceling the NCAA tournament, canceling our tournament, uh, presidential election that was, you know, highly uh, uh, heated. So we've had to deal with a lot in our guys. I told our guys it took me 50 years to go experience all that. They did it in six months. You know, and so we're still here, but I think we're around in the corner, hopefully with a vaccination. And, you know, we got to just keep keep our people safe. And, and that's the most important thing we've done since June. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. But, uh, yeah, I wish we were in a better place. But this is this is where we are right now. With it. We'll take the next question from uh, Richie. Hey, Coach, what's going on? Richie, how are you? I'm good. So. You guys brought in three, technically four freshmen, if you count Oscar, who came in in January. What stands out about the, that group so far? Um, first of all, the four guys have been so coachable. Like I mean, you know, they've been great physically too. They're they're big and athletic. It's the biggest group we've ever brought in. Uh, but really, uh, what stand? They're workers. I mean, they're good teammates. I mean, I love what they bring to us. Um, and they're talented, you know, basketball players. So 
I couldn't I couldn't be more pleased. They really have fit in great. We lost some really um, good teammates and some coachable kids in Aquasi and Shaq and you know Joey Downs too was part of our you know class last year. But these kids really have come in. They've given us an added dimension of competitiveness at all those positions. You know Miles and Cliff go at it every day and. Mawat and, and Ron Harper go at it every day and Oscar goes at it every day. Um, you, you know, and, and, and they've really done a, you know, really, really good job of raising the level of our practices. So um, couldn't be more pleased is by far our best, you know, class and they're good students. They're good people. They're coachable. You know, all the things I want here at, you know, at Rutgers and all the things I want my program to be about. And they're going to be great teammates too. They cheer for their, you know, Montez, they cheer for you know the older guys. They 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 push them and and they're friendly with them too off the court. So really like what they've brought to the program. And then you know yesterday we added two more you know nice pieces to our program. You know two great kids with tremendous upsides from great families. You know all the qualities I really look for. Jim Rats and really good basketball players. So um, the future is you know is bright here on the banks. Thanks, coach. Take a question. Take a question from Aaron Brightman. Hey, Coach. How are you? Aaron, good. How are you? Good. Um, wanted to ask about Paul McKehey. Uh Looks like physically he's he's really developed in the off season. Wanted to ask about the growth in his game. Um, you know, potentially how he could help fill the gap in McConnell's absence, and just what your expectations are for him this season. Yeah, Paul's been unbelievable, and he started a foundation too as a freshman. Yeah, doing great things for uh, for the state of New Jersey. Uh, but Paul had a great off season. I think he's gotten taller too. He told me that six seven, um, but his physically he looks different. Um, you know he's really comfortable. He improved his you know jump shot, his ball handling. Um, he's been great in practice. By far been our best assist guy, uh, and defensively too, he's made some really good jumps. He's going to play a huge role for us because he can play so many positions. He can guard so many positions. Uh, he's unselfish. He got all the great qualities, and uh, it's going to be a huge key to our our season this year. Take a question from Jaden Daly. Hey, Steve, how are you? Jaden, good. What are you doing? Good, thank you. I know it really doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things two weeks out from the season, but can you comment about having a preseason ranking going into the year and just how far the program has come from when you arrived four years ago to where it is now? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, again, I think it's, you know, compliment to our players and how hard they've worked and to change the, you know, narrative of Rutgers basketball. Um, they've sacrificed a lot. Um, you know, we have guys now on the watch list. We have freshmen that people are talking about. Um, we have the Kuzi uh, watch list and Julie Serving watch list. So, you know, really just a, a credit, first of all, you know, credit to my staff. Uh, and, and I'm very thankful. Um, they're all back. Um, they all had chances to leave. I mean, Carl Hobbs, Brandon Knight, um, Steve Hain, Shoes Vitron, Ben Asher, Mike Larkin, TJ Thompson. I mean, just really good people, good basketball people. All could be running their own programs, too. Um, so a credit to the work that they've done, really, more than anything over the last four years. And, and a credit, really, too, to the environment that the rack and the excitement that the rack has helped generate, you know, with our program. So um, those guys get all the credit for that. I mean, it doesn't mean anything once the ball goes up on the 25th, um, you know, rankings and lists and all that stuff. Then you got to do the real hard work. But, you know, real thankful that, you know, those guys have helped, you know, build this program into a program that people can be proud of. And, um, you know, I think that's what that staff, that's what my staff has done for us. And, Lucky to keep him around. Brandon's a head coach and waiting. Carl's been a head coach. He's been a Atlantic 10 coach of the year. Steve Haynes been Division II coach of the year. I mean, these guys were, you know, just lucky to have them. And um, they continue to um, develop the program, you know, the way I want it to be developed. I want to recruit kids that want to be here. I want to recruit kids that want to get better. I want to recruit kids that want to represent our program. I want to recruit kids that want to graduate. And these guys have been great. And, uh, you know, in doing that, and our guys have jumped on board. Montez Mathis has, you know, gotten better. Like all these guys, Ron Harper's gotten better. Paul's gotten better. You know, that's how I want to build this. Miles Johnson's gotten better. You know, build this program. Find these young guys and 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 help develop them. And and uh, you know, have my staff continue to do the great work that they've done. So those rankings are a product of that work. 
take one from Jerry Carino. Jerry, you still in the rest area or you start moving? Jerry, you think you're on mute, Jerry. Uh, I'm still here. The, the trucks are zooming by, but I'm still here. Uh, all right. So, Steve, all the all the extra eligibility you guys are getting going to have. How does that change the things you do as a coach, recruiting wise, player development, roster management wise? What's that been like for you? You, you know, Jerry. Quite honestly, you know, I, uh, when all that happened, I told all the players that you know another year of college, you guys get a, the privilege to. Be able to, you know, stay another year, get a master's degree, whatever you guys, you know, decide that you want to do and be. But I, I, I reiterated to them, be where your feet are today. You know, all that stuff is down the road. Um, let's enjoy this season. Let's have the greatest season, hopefully, in Rutgers basketball, you, you know, uh, history. That's what we want to try to do. But uh you can't make decisions like that down the road. You know, they got more opportunities. I'm glad the NCAA has put in new rules to give guys more opportunities. I tell them all the time, don't be in a hurry to leave college. Um, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, they're going to have more opportunities than ever. They're going to put the transfer immediate rule in. They're going to have name, image, and likeness rules. So, you know, all these things benefit the student athlete. And I'm all for I'm all for, you know, all those things and give them as much as, as we can possibly give them, um, you know. But we'll worry about all that stuff at the end of the year. Hope I hope I told them all that. I hope they all stay as long as they can with me. But at some point in time, they may be sick of me, too. So, um, you, you know, but if they want to stay for as long as they can stay, I want to coach them. And I said that to all the players, and I sincerely mean that, too. Um, you know, I really do. We'll take uh, two more. We'll take one from Chris Nowalski, and then we'll finish with Keith Sargent. Hey, Coach. Uh, I'm just curious if you have a starting lineup set and uh, who would be in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know me. I love the starting lineup question because it means the least <laughs> to me, and you guys think I kid about that at all, and I think our depth is going to decide if we have a great season this year. So, you know, I, I don't make those decisions you know, too early. I mean, we got a lot of returning starters. You know, I always felt like last year we had eight or nine guys that could start games. I think COVID's going to dictate a lot of this stuff um, too. But um, you know, guys are competing still for minutes, and you know, um, we're gonna we're gonna keep keep it that way for the next two weeks too. And and uh, you know, if they're hungry to start, then they got two more weeks to prove you know that they're starters. But you know, I really believe this. You, you know. Uh, in order to be really special, we got to have, you know, nine or ten players that can really play, and we got to be ready for whatever um, whatever the game brings us, you know, this year. So I'm not as caught up in starting. I know the kids are and how important it is to them, but it's never been one of my big things. You know, I, I really believe um, guys coming off the bench could play more minutes depending on the games, you know, depending on the situation. Uh, but we have a lot of starters. We have a lot of choices. At some point in time, I got to get it to five. But um, I'm not there yet. All right, we'll call it two more now. We'll give one to Sarge and let Cratch finish us off after that. Steve, I know we get it all the time. I'm sure you're getting the same question. But you know, do you think that uh, you'll, you'll be playing on November 25th? I know a lot of it's beyond your control. But yeah, when, when do you think a schedule will be out? I mean, I don't know when the league schedule is going to come out. So, you know, we're definitely playing on the 25th. feel 100% confident, you know, in that. Um, you know, and then after that, you, you know, we'll, we'll see where it takes. But I think all year long we're going to have, you know, some, some show. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully we continue to manage, you know, this the right way uh, with our program. But I'm sure there's going to be just like there are in football and, you know, some stoppages or some postpones or delays. Um, you know, I'm hoping to get the schedule soon, but you know, we're going to throw it up on the 25th and hopefully our guys are ready. I, like I tell them, it's a lot of things we can't control. Nobody's going to be in the gym this year. We have to bring our own energy. We, whoever we play, we got to be ready to play. It's really going to be more about us, you know, staying healthy and being ready to play than the opponent this year. Um, and we're going to have a lot of different challenges that we haven't encountered in the past and, Hopefully we've thought about a lot of them and we've, you know, getting ready and hopefully we'll have some dates, you know, and, you know, that we can make up games and, 
You know, I think we'll be scheduling well into the season, too, this year. I think this is going to be a different kind of season. I think we're going to be calling schools in January saying, that, you know, you lost a game, we lost a game, we have a free date, you have a free date, do you want to play? So I don't, I don't see that not ha- – you know, I see that happening, too. So, um, But I do believe we're going to have a season this year, right? and, and I'm excited. I think, you know, it's going to be good for the state of, of, of New Jersey to have basketball playing just like it is. I mean, how great is it to watch football? And the job that Coach Chiano's doing with our football team, I love, you know, just tuning in and 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 being excited, you know, about watching, you know, our football program and how quickly, you know, he he has done an unbelievable job to build the enthusiasm that he has. So I look forward to basketball jumping right in too, and you'll have a football game on a Saturday, and whenever we're playing, you'll have a basketball game. So Rutgers Nation could be uh, excited and and busy watching TV, and and I hope really that we have the highest watch games, you know, basketball in, in the country. And that's what I'm hoping Rutgers nation, because they always stand up and support. Now they got to turn their TVs on and watch. And uh, we'll try to remember and play hard for them. Last question from Crouch and then we'll let coach go. Steve, I, you just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, the idea of having the best season in Rutgers history. You know, obviously there was a Rutgers team that was undefeated and played in the final four. There's really not much more you can do beyond that. Uh, is that something you worry about talking? I mean, your, your players have to realize that. So should I say I want to have a top two season? Then? <laughs> uh, well, that's what I'm saying. It's a national championship. It's the only place really to go. Well, I mean, uh, you, you know, obviously every team starts off the year like that, but the Big Ten wins national championships. That's the league we're in, guys. They go to Final Fours, and that's the league we're in, you know, and Hall of Fame basketball coaches, and, you know, and so, you know, we have those kind of goals too, and and I'm sure Coach Chiano has them too in football. I never said, you know, these things aren't easy Everyone's trying to do it. There's a lot of great teams out there, and there's a lot of great programs out there. But I think that's the exciting part of basketball. When you start off a season, like those are your goals: go to the NCAA tournament and um, you know compete for national championships. I think that's you know that's the goal. That's why I came to play in this league and and uh, coach in this league, and that's why I came to this great university. So um, you know those are the, you know those are the goals. You guys will write about it and do all that stuff, but you got to do it. You know you got to do it on the court and. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I think every coach in our league starts out with those goals. I, I really do believe that. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Coach.